What is the revenue potential for Tesla's new premium connectivity package? And also, how does this compare to other car brands in the industry? I'm Jonathan Stewart, and welcome to Cleaner Watt. So many Tesla owners recently received a message from Tesla letting them know that their premium connectivity that they've been getting for free in their cars was no longer going to be free. Tesla owners have long enjoyed the free premium connectivity features that have come with their Teslas. The message that went out to Tesla owners mentioned that their year of complimentary connectivity was ending December 31st of 2019 this year and it mentioned that after this date your car will switch to standard connectivity. Standard connectivity basically is only going to include navigation. So you'll get navigation but you won't have live traffic, satellite view maps, live streaming, karaoke, music streaming, or the internet browser. In order to get these features Owners now have to pay $9.99 a month or $119.88 per month. I think the question that a lot of people had was, was this a surprise? Did we know this was coming? Well, I found this article by PC Magazine, and it showed back in June 25th of 2018, they were talking about Tesla's premium in-car internet package stopping from being free after July 1st of 2018. So this is something that is not a surprise and it's something that's been talked about and really in a lot of ways is long overdue. Now what are the cutoff dates and what cars does this apply to? So I'll link to this page in the description below that has all this data directly from Tesla but they have stated that if you ordered your car before June 30th of 2018 you will automatically have access to existing premium connectivity features at no cost for the lifetime of the car and you do not need to subscribe. So good news for you if you ordered your car in the first two quarters or back of 2018 you have this at no cost for the lifetime of your car. I'm really glad that Tesla is offering this to these customers that ordered their car a while ago and I do think it was the right thing to do. For people that ordered or purchased their Tesla after July 1st of 2018, their trial date for premium connectivity ends December 31st of 2019, and therefore to maintain premium connectivity, they need to pay the $9.99 a month, and that would need to start by January 1st of 2020. Tesla also mentions that the orders of the Model S, Model X, and Model 3 with the premium interior will still receive a one-year trial of premium connectivity for free. And if you buy the Model 3 Standard Range or Standard Range Plus, you will receive a 30-day complimentary premium connectivity trial. And once again, these features include navigation, live traffic visualization, satellite view maps, video streaming, karaoke, music streaming, and the internet browser. So one of the main reasons that I'm doing this video is to talk about the potential recurring revenue for Tesla based on this premium connectivity package. So I've put together a table here and I've put in not only the historical data for any quarter that is relevant to this revenue, but I'm also putting there in red my predictions for Q4 2019 through Q4 of 2020. Obviously these numbers are my own predictions. They may or may not come true, but I'm using these as just a way to show the potential revenue that could come from this. So you'll notice there, I've put this into several columns, the deliveries, when that revenue would be recognized, meaning a year after the quarter that it is ordered and you have the number of accumulated cars that have the potential to be paying for this service and then you have the accumulated dollars of people paying for that service and these estimates are assuming that 75 percent of Tesla owners eligible to pay for this will 
go ahead and commit and pay the $9.99 per month. So I think 75% is a very fair estimate. Obviously, it could be greater, it could be less, but I feel that's I feel that's a good conservative and realistic number that I think will hold true. So as it mentioned, if you purchased your car before Q3 of 2018, you get this for free already. But for those who ordered their car Q3 and beyond, that revenue is going to, going to start being recognized Q1 of 2020. So you'll notice there Q3 of 2018, Q4 of 2018, and Q1 of 2019. They'll start recognizing that revenue as early as January 1st of 2020. And so you'll notice there, there, there is a potential for already $21 million of revenue at the beginning of 2020. But when this really starts getting interesting and begins to be a pretty significant gain for Tesla is by the end of 2021, you'll notice there that I am predicting by the end of Q4 2020, there will be 1.2 million eligible Teslas on the road that potentially could be paying for the service. And that revenue could be recognized that full $109 million of estimated revenue at 75% conversion could be recognized by the end of 2021. So going forward in 2022, it's very possible that there is well over $100 million of potential recurring revenue for Tesla. Now, just as a side note, these estimates that I'm putting, I feel like are pretty realistic. And some of the reasons why I see the increases that are shown on this table are because in Q1 of 2020, there should be at least 3,000 Model 3s coming out of China, Shanghai, Gigafactory 3 per week. They're already here at the very end of 2019, producing quite a few cars. And it seems like they have gained approval to start selling them in China, the China-made Model 3s. So I think it's very possible that they could be doing at least 3,000 a week in Q1 of 2020. Of course, that will be a huge gain for Tesla that will allow them to sell more vehicles here in the domestic U.S. market and be able to ship more to other European countries as well. I'm also assuming that the Model Y sales are going to begin early Q2 of 2020. Of course, there might be a few sneak out in Q1 of 2020, but I don't think there'll be any large numbers that'll be significant. I think Q2 of 2020 is when we're going to start seeing a decent amount of those deliveries happen. I'm also assuming that, as Elon mentioned, around Q3 of 2020, we should have the Plaid Model S and X variants available, which I think will be a huge increase for sales of the Model S and X. And I think those numbers will get back to around 25,000 combined sales between the S and the X per quarter again, like it was before the Model 3 came out. Now, one of the next questions is, does Tesla make a profit on this premium connectivity package? Based on what I can find, I'm assuming they're not making a profit on this. But going forward, this is 50 to $100 million of more cash flow that can be used for other purposes like research and development, increasing the supercharger network, building more service centers, and of course, many more things that they could be doing with it. But could it be a break even going forward? So I was able to do a little bit of research and I found that AT&T provides unlimited plans for other brands like Jaguar and BMW at $20 per month. So I'm assuming that if the retail rate is $20 per month for unlimited, I imagine that Tesla could be breaking even at $9.99 at their level. Whether Tesla is breaking even or just reducing the amount of losses that they have to pay for this service, it is definitely going to help them a lot. You know, with the amount of Tesla vehicles that are on the road right now, and what I project will happen in the next couple years, what they'd be paying AT&T for these vehicles would begin to be a financial drain 
on the company. And so by charging for this service, this makes sure that Tesla's financials stay healthy going forward and there are not things like this draining money from their system. They need more money for research and development. They need this money for supercharger deployment. They need this for more service centers. They need this to produce these new vehicles that they have unveiled. And this is going to be very necessary and very important for the future financial health of Tesla going forward. Now that we've explored the package a little bit, how this potentially could help Tesla and the potential for revenue in the next few years, I want to talk a little bit about how this premium connectivity package pricing and features compare to some of the other popular brands in the industry. Is this a good deal or is it too expensive? Well, if you're an Audi owner, then you already know about this, but I went to their website and I pulled up some of the connectivity features that they have and I found their service called Connect Prime. They charge $199 for six months or $499 for 18 months, and that includes Google Earth, traffic information, traffic light information, Audi destinations, voice recognition, Amazon Alexa, and parking information. And so you'll notice there a decent suite of features, but this comes at a cost. Then you have Mercedes-Benz with their Embrace connectivity packages. You'll notice there that Embrace Secure is $199 per year, and that is their safety and security package with collision notification, stolen vehicle location services, emergency services, agent-assisted door lock and unlock services, alarm notifications, etc. And that's $199 per year. On top of that, if you'd like to have location-based traffic, weather, and turn-by-turn -turn route assistance, that would be an additional $20 a month on top of that $200 a year. So that's another $240 a month on top of that. And if you'd also like the Embrace Entertainment features, which is TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, and Wi-Fi, that's another $18 a month. So you start adding all this up and this gets very expensive very quickly. So if you subscribe to all three of these packages, you would be paying $655 per year to have these services. Porsche also has connectivity packages that cost quite a bit per year. So you have their navigation and infotainment package, which is $205 per year after their 12 month free trial period. You have their car remote packages, which allows you to control your car from your phone. That is $110 a year. And then you have your car security package, which is $230 per year. If you add that all up, you car if you add up the car security package, the navigation and infotainment package, and the car remote package, you're looking at $545 per year for these services. When you compare Tesla's premium connectivity package, the features that it includes, and everything you're getting for that $9.99 a month, you can quickly see that it is actually an excellent deal and Tesla is being very fair with this service. Now, once again, in conclusion, why this is important, I think it's important because this could potentially reach over $100 million of revenue by the end of 2021 for Tesla. And this, of course, will cause less financial drain on Tesla going forward with a possible break even of what Tesla is paying AT&T for this service. And as we compared, this is the best connectivity package pricing in the industry and it has some of the best features as well. Thank you so much for watching this video through to the end. If you are not yet subscribed to the channel, I ask that you would consider subscribing so you'll know when new videos are posted. And if you click that bell icon, you'll actually be notified when new videos are put out. If you did enjoy the video and you liked it, please consider clicking the like button so others can find the video as well. Thank you so much.